इतना दूर नहीं है जितना कहा था वो नौरोद ने खलील गिबरान की एक लाइन है वेर ही सीज these children are not your children or my children they are the life's longing for itself so over the years what i have come to learn that the image the space the experience that i capture it should not have a stamp of ragurai or anybody else it should give you the feeling of life's longing for itself that you captured and that life's longing is endless it never begins from anywhere it never ends anywhere and yet you have to carve your frame but it should be so spontaneous when you give it back to life that life starts moving again agar main subah naha do ke baith jaau to means i need to go to sleep but if i move out then i'm very quick and agile and doing things nidhi hota hai kare yaar ninni time aur so jaate hain you know sona bhi badi khoobsurat cheez hai sanam sona sona bilkul puchne ko to itna hai kahan se shuru kare kahin se to karna padega kyunki i am not the kind who will go on speaking like brasso was going on and on I've been taking pictures when I was very young I think I don't remember what age I started by painting and drawing and for me photography was a mean of drawing and that's all immediate sketch done with intuition and you can't correct it if you have to correct it it's a next picture मैं अपने ब्रदर के पास रहने आया था दिल्ली में तब मैं कुछ कर नहीं रहा था मैंने गवर्नमेंट के साथ एक साल तक जॉब की थी एज ए जूनियर इंजीनियर डूइंग एज चेकिंग एस्टिमेट्स एंड डूइंग स्मॉल थिंग्स विद द गवर्नमेंट और वो जॉब एक साल की थी फिर वो ख़त्म हो गई फिर छः महीने मैंने आर्मी के साथ एज अ ड्राॅइंग इंस्ट्रक्टर काम किया था तो तब मुझे दिया गया था गोवा के मैप सर्टन एरिया के क्योंकि हमारी मैं आर्मी में जाट रेजिमेंट में था तो आइडिया ये था कि अगर गोवा के साथ हमारा कॉन्फ्रेंटेशन लंबा चलता है तो नेक्स्ट इन लाइन विल बी जाट रेजिमेंट दैट विल बी सेंट टू गोवा तो गोवा के कुछ एरिया के मैप्स मुझे दिए गए थे टू मेक ब्लो अप ड्राॅइंग्स फिर वो भी छः महीने में ख़त्म हो गई जी भर गया फिर मैं दिल्ली आ गया पॉल के पास तो उनके पास सारे फोटोग्राफर ही आते थे कैमराज किसी ने नया लेंस खरीदा है तो नया लेंस दिखाने उन दिनों ऐसा था ना कि कैमराज और इक्वमेंट और लेंसेज और फिल्म आसानी से नहीं मिलती थी तो यही होता था कि कभी किसी के हाथ लग गया या किसी का कोई रिश्तेदार आ गया उसके थ्रू एक लेंस मंगवा लिया या कोई नई कैमरा बॉडी मंगवा ली तो फिर ये सब लोग इकट्ठे होते थे देखते थे डिस्कस करते थे कि क्या चीज़ है ये या फोटोग्राफी मैगजीन्स जो होते थे तो उनका मतलब फोटोग्राफी का ही जमघट्टा होता था पॉल के घर में तो मैं यूज देख के हैरान होता था मैं कहता था कि आप पगले लोग सारे लगे रहते हैं दिन भर फोटोग्राफी करते रहे पॉल का एक दोस्त था योग जॉय उसकी रोहतक के पास काफ़ी लैंड थी फार्मर फैमिली से था और काफ़ी एजुकेटेड भी था बहुत बढ़िया इंसान था वेरी गुड पर्सन तो वो पॉल के पास आता था कभी कभी तस्वीरें खींच के दिखाने के लिए उसने कहा कि वो अपने गांव जा रहा है तो मैंने कहा चलो मैं भी तुम्हारे साथ चलता हूँ मैं भी तुम्हारे गांव में चल के दो एक दिन 
छुट्टी मनाऊंगा तो ऐसे ही मैं जाते वक्त मैंने अपने भाई को कहा पॉल को मैंने कहा आप मुझे एक कैमरा दे दीजिए मैं भी जाके ऐसे ही फोटो खींचूंगा ऐसे कैजुअली तो तो मैं पॉल ने मुझे एक छोटा कैमरा विद अ फिक्स लेंस एग फॉर सुपर सिलेट विद फिफ्टी मिलीमीटर लेंस वो उसने मुझे एक फिल्म लोड करके दे दिया फोकस समझा दिया थोड़ा एक्सपोजर समझा दिया दो ही तो चीज़ें थी <laughs> तो मैं जॉय के साथ चला गया उसके गांव में ऐसे उसके साथ घूम रहा था ही वॉज टेकिंग पिक्चर्स ऑफ चिल्ड्रन इन द विलेज इट वॉज लेट टवर्ड्स द इवनिंग वेन द लाइट वॉज फेडिंग एंड whole lot of children you know as you go to any village mm. children collect you know and they want to have fun with you mm. so they were having fun and he was taking pictures and then uh, you see on one side this was happening and the village on the other side when i turned i saw a little baby donkey standing in the landscape you know, fading light and baby donkeys they always look very cute to main aise hi maine socha yaar ki ye acha lag raha hai something you know refreshing to maine uski taraf camera kiya normal lens tha to jahan main khada tha maine dekha usme bada chhota sa reh jata to main thoda aage badha to jab main thoda uske kareeb pahuncha to wo dar ke bhag liya to bacche jo the wo mujhe bhi dekh rahe the this swami <coughs> and when the baby donkey ran away they started laughing the children so i thought that was quite a fun so just out of fun i started running behind the baby donkey let children have some fun you know so they were clapping and laughing and i was running after them after a while the baby donkey got tired and he stopped so i took my picture just one frame and i said chalo ho gaya so when i came back my brother processed the film and he saw that picture of baby donkey and this is a wonderful picture no i didn't know what is so wonderful about it i don't remember exactly it was 1965 or 66 at that time there was a great picture editor called norman hall australian but settled in england you know in london he was the editor of photography magazine for many years where he used to publish portfolios of people like Andy Cartier Bresson Bill Brown all those famous photographers of that time. so he started a special column in the sunday times you know every weekend there will be one half page picture back page picture on 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 the, at the end of the paper which should have some something funny something humorous something ironic or something strange or some odd story through a picture so paul sent my pictures and his pictures and he published that picture on half page with my byline so you can imagine my start was not with any small newspaper <laughs> it was first with the image. times even the first image yeah first image half page mm. and my name on it and the money he sent me for one picture was enough for me to carry on for a month what was your learning process what do you remember that how you started learning learning process was simple and is there in the sense the most interesting part as i say you know i am an outdoor man and i love nature and i love people and life when i put a camera on my eye what was fascinating for me was that all my energies were focused 
and I was interacting with the world around me with more intensity. So I was engaged. I was. That was the beginning of an, an engagement with the world around me through this viewfinder. And exploring the world, trying to understand the world was so fascinating. So it's not okay. Let me take some good pictures with a camera. Camera gave me the ability to focus on the world around me. After all, what do you need? You need some bahana, something that puts your focus in control. And that was happening with the camera. So the world of exploration and enjoyment became richer and richer with me as I went on taking pictures. Now when I look back, why, how did I, you know, I never wanted to become a photographer. And eventually I became a photographer. Why? How? So when I look back, this is the journey, you know, the feeling I have. The world was becoming so interesting. I didn't sleep at night, when will it be in the morning? But even today I live like that. When I am on shooting spree, hmm? I can't rest, I can't breathe. Because I think even breathing is a waste of time. And you have to be engaged. I still feel that my agenda on this planet is not complete yet, you know. Because I'm, I have been a part-time photographer, part-time this, part-time that, you know. I need to come back again to be intensely and seriously involved in creating things. <laughs> but also, over the years you learn a kind of discipline. It's a need to be engaged in taking pictures. And if you don't take pictures for a week or 10 days, it doesn't mean that next time when you start, you will start on the same plane. Because your energy level, your connectivity, there has been a gap. So when again you start taking pictures, it takes you a while to reach there, the last time you, the level you had achieved, and then go further. But now it's not so. Now, even when I shoot after 20 days, you know, it takes me a few minutes to be there and connected. And uh, also because over the years, you know, you achieve certain kind of discipline and also the awareness, the alertness in you. And that makes a lot of difference. In that time, when we started pictures, then photography, जो थी उसकी कैनवस इतनी थी इतनी स्पेस में लो, से लोग डील करते थे ब्रशों का भी बहुत सारा काम अगर आप देखें तो बड़ी लिमिटेड स्पेस में है कहीं कहीं उसका फ्रेम इतना खुल जाता है यू नो यू सी सो मच स्पेस एंड लाइक ही वेंट टू चाइना इन 49 एंड देन ही वाज डीलिंग विद द मासेस when the communists were taking over. So naturally he had to open up his frame to the masses. But you oh, see 30s, ki, early 40s ki pictures they came before he came to India and China. His world was this much, you know, but very intense. You met Krishna Krishna? Uh-huh. Quite a few times and he was wonderful. He nominated me to Mag- Magnum Photos. My first exhibition in uh, Paris in 1970 when the Bangladesh refugees had started pouring into India and so I had some photographs of refugees coming into India plus my creative work and he was the first person the exhibition was to open at 6 p.m. and he was there at 5.45 and suddenly I see a man carrying a light car and looking at pictures very carefully so I observed him for a while and uh, you know he's his Laika in his hands and looking at the pictures so I went close to him I looked at him then he turned around and I said are you Mr. Bresson he says yes so he says are you the photographer I said yes so we shook hands and he says give me a few minutes let me see the pictures I said please then you know he was so wonderful he rang up his wife Martin 
saying that I have met a very good Indian photographer. I'd like to invite him home. look through the viewfinder and look at the world, all my energies will get focused and I could take a very intense and close look at the world around me. So photography is my need to explore the world. Photography is my dharma. And Katena, you don't tell a lie in front of your God. Similarly, you don't play lies through your camera. You capture the essential truth of any given situation. And that is a cleansing and purifying process for me as a photographer. And similarly, I feel if everyone, no matter what profession you are in, you are a writer, you are a filmmaker, you are a parliamentarian, or you are a fruit seller on the street. If you are doing your job as a dharma, the world will be a very beautiful place. If this is your dharma, then you will perform with utmost honesty and sincerity. And the world will become a beautiful place. But bulk of these journalists, bureaucrats, politicians, they are playing for each other. So if you don't have a religion, you don't have a religion, then what do you have to do? What is your value system? Nothing. These are the crises. No, my days with India today was very nice, very interesting. In the editorial meetings, you know, they had editors will say that this is the kind of story we should do and this is the kind of approach we should have and then those were the years when I told my editors that listen you guys sitting in AC rooms and giving us uh, the editorial directions is not such a good idea I think best would be that you come and travel with us to the locations and to the situations that matter and see the situations all over again, what they have to say today, in today's context. Today, internet and Google, you can complete 80% of the stories without going there. You know. So that closeness, close proximity and first-hand experience is lacking in most of the journalism today. But then that was the time I was there with India Today for 10 long years. And we did some great things and we created some great issues. And those great issues like Bhopal gas tragedy or Indira Gandhi's death, they became collector's items, you know. The biggest achievement of man, as somebody said, you know, was that we uh, created a god for ourselves. Bhagwan bhi to hami ne banaye hai na. Wo koi aswan se utar ke to aaye nahi. Ab Sai Baba kitne logon ke Bhagwan chale gaye. Hamare Sachin Tendulkar bhi wahan baithe hai na. So, since nothing is permanent, everything changes yeah. and many things perish with the time, especially human life. And marriages are important, but marriage is also very tough because life requires, it changes so fast, things change so fast that it requires a whole lot of you all the time, even to keep your relationship with your friends, with your wife, with anybody going on that level of freshness, especially when you live together. It's quite a test, you know. And it's a test in creativity, for sure. Because <laughs> you have to be creative in every aspect of life. You 
जब कैमरा उठाऊंगा तब मैं क्रिएशन क्रिएटिविटी के पीछे जाऊंगा इफ यू आर इक्वली क्रिएटिव इन योर पर्सनल रिलेशनशिप लाइफ बिकम्स फार मोर इंटरेस्टिंग यू एंड इट एंड रिच इज यू I had my first show I think in 1970 in Delhi in Triveni and um, I sent a simple invitation to Indira Gandhi also I said would be nice if you come and sure you know I got a response that Mrs Gandhi would like to come on such a such and such day and she turned up easier for me to you know touch mother teresa and be very close to her because she was a mother of everybody mother to everybody but indira gandhi nevertheless was a very i mean she was a great leader and she cared for arts and culture and photographers and photography there's no doubt about that but i won't say that i had a, i had that kind of close relationship certainly she recognized us and uh, you know i got special appointments also with her when i was doing a book on her but she was so alert and so careful about what should be photographed and what shouldn't be photographed so i had the same show here in jahangir art gallery good response very good and then i didn't have any exhibition for many years and now thanks to digital technology because i thought you know preparing a show a proper full fledged exhibition making prints mounting and everything was like marrying off your daughter mm -hmm. takes a lot of time and energy and i thought it was boring and also i have always felt even today that there are hardly any critics in this country who can write well about art especially photography who better to capture india or rather indians through the lens than the iconic raghu rai with a 40 year career in photography behind him in fact he describes india as a horizontal experience capturing a moment in space that used to be the line for photographers today i think it's outdated because india the experience of india has to be multi layered and a moment in space is just not enough and that's why sometimes i use panoramic cameras which capture so much more space the portraits themselves in this book the indians date back to the 19th century and are from raghu rai's own collection charting our history in some sense from colonial times to the present day including his more recent portraits you had to give a long exposure and make people sit don't move don't breathe like that and now you see you can make people sit and tell them not to move you know but you can't stop their emotions coming and going into their eyes so most of these old portraits if you look at them the eyes are riveting because of the influence of the painting you look at this photograph actually except for the face the face is the photograph the rest they overpainted the whole thing we have mahatma gandhi as a barrister as a satyagrahi huh? and then him as mahatma and you look at this handsome man you know and that romantic guy that he was that how he loved life in new delhi amita tripathi western medium of photography it the way it started came to india and then came the concept of capturing a moment in space it's not large enough now and india being you know uh, such an ancient civilization where so many centuries have lived to learn to live side by side at the same time the experience of india has to be multi layered and a moment in space is not enough because in india india is a horizontal experience 
and at any given time so many moments are living together simultaneously at the same time in any given space and this is how I started using panoramic cameras because this frame was not enough I wanted to open up like that and bulk of my photography today has multiplicity of you know experience experiences so this is a big difference in photography we used to see from the West and the way we started photographing and what I like to do today India is a subject Almost all of your pictures are related to India. I never go around shooting all over the world. India is the right grounds for me. You know, I can I can feel and smell with my eyes closed. You, know. you see, uh, India is a very uh, overcrowded nation. You know, and big cities like Delhi or Calcutta or Varanasi, you go into the streets and you know, multiplicity of, you know, activities everywhere. Many people have many little shops on, on the big roads also. Many people are living side by side, even on the footpaths also. And they wind up by the evening and they disappear into nowhere. So almost everything is be happening on the streets. And also almost every important photographer in the world, once he comes to this country, is so fascinated and charred and they keep coming back to India yeah. because India the life here is so amazingly intense and expressive even on the streets people live their daily lives and relationships on the footpaths on in the streets you know in small villages everything is out there for you to grab you know but uh, Having said that, you know, the experience of India can be very d difficult because on the physical level, it's so devastatingly exciting and different, but the ability to penetrate deeper into the layers is uh, within the reach of very few, you know, like Bresson, because he was highly instinctive and he came at the time, you see, he came to India when the partition was happening, the most intense period of uh, period in the history of India yes. similarly went to China when the communists were taking over so the man had that you know vision and connection I did a book, not really my book, but I did a book on, on Mother Teresa when I was with the statesman in 1970. And it was published by Collins, London. I won't say it was a picture book, it was more of text. And we had an editor called Desmond Doig, who was very closely associated with Mother Teresa. And he called me in 1970 to Calcutta to come and meet the lady and see, you know, what tremendous work she is doing. And surely I also fell in love with her. And ever since I started photographing her. But actually my first book was A, a Life in the Day of Indira Gandhi. Usually it's a day in the life of, but Desmond Dyke was a very creative person. He says, you know, it's very common now, a life in, a day in the life of. So we will say, a life in the day of Indira Gandhi. So we did a book. But I don't know about aesthetics, you know, because you know, some people say your pictures are very poetic and uh, there's a lot of, you know, magic about it or whatever. But, you know, initially, early years, we used to look for good composition and good light, you know. But then later, you know, when one became serious, that it was very essential that we are free of 
composing frames because photography is not like painting it's totally different than ball game and you don't apply the similar kind of aesthetics to uh, this medium of photography otherwise you better become a painter you know each element in any given space that enriches and enhances the experience of being there should become the forms as a composition and it should be done in that spontaneous successive moments which are coming and disappearing you know two people in my life one my elder brother as paul who was very handsome now of course he's very old other person in my life was kishor parekh swapan parekh's father <laughs> he also he was vibrant affectionate fun loving very hard working and he was with hindustan times as a chief photographer and i worked with him for a year and then i resigned from hindustan times and meanwhile the statesman newspaper was at that time in 60s and 70s very dignified important newspaper so you know the, their chief photographer was retiring and i they offered me a job of chief photographer in the statesman so paul was chief photographer indian express who's 11 years older to me kishor parekh was chief photographer of hindustan times he was 10 years older to me and i became the chief photographer of the statesman me and kishor we became very good friends but we were terrible rivals nevertheless you know we were rivals and between these two giants who were 10 years 11 years older to me and more experienced either i get crushed between the two giants or with their pressure i spring up so i was already in in first second year i was already competing with them maybe that helped me a lot agar kishor aur paul nahi hote to shayad main bhi nahi hota nahi instead of being jealous of each other's work and fame and importance you know your creativity into my creativity into his creativity in into sudharak's creativity is a multiplication in our space a creative moment is an intuitive moment which is god sent connectivity with the world around you and photography for me is a darshan so jo mujhe darshan karaye wo mere mere liye bahut bada insaan hai ठीक है ना क्या आपने मुझे एक नए एक्सपीरियंस के दर्शन कराए थ्रू योर क्रिएटिव एबिलिटीज इज समथिंग वेरी प्रेशियस टू मी एंड इफ आउट ऑफ जेलिसी आई रिजेक्ट इट और कंडेम इट मींस आई एम डिनाइंग माय सेल्फ द प्रिविलेज ऑफ एंजॉइंग दैट मोमेंट ऑफ क्रिएटिविटी एंड दर्शन के पांच दस बार तक कर सकते कुछ तो पचास पचास बार सूर्य नमस्कार ही करते फिर दूसरा कोई व्यायाम करने की जरूरत ही नहीं रहती ए, दो। बाबा रामदेव इज समथिंग वेरी स्पेशल हैपनिंग टू दिस कंट्री एंड द मैन इज वेरी ओरिजिनल द मैन इज डेडिकेटेड एंड इज सो फोकस्ड एंड हिज अट्रेंसेस आर समटाइम्स सो ओरिजिनल and so powerful that they wake you up so you know i remember one day in uh, one of his yogic sex session there was one old woman she got up and she said baba ramdev aapki kripa se aapne ye jo aasan bataye maine ye kiya aur wo kiya aur flana kiya aur meri ye problem bhi dur ho gayi i have recovered from this disease also and i am feeling much better and i can walk around my son son had diabetes and he is recovered you know following your you know uh, yogic kriyas and everything and i'll ask the government i'll request the government that they should give you a bharat ratna and right away 
बाबा रामदेव से मुझे किसी सरकार से कोई भारत रत्न नहीं चाहिए आई डोंट वॉन्ट इट फ्रॉम एनी गवर्नमेंट टू यू नो रिकग्नाइज मी एज भारत रत्न आई एम भारत रत्न नॉट ओनली दैट ही सेज ईच वन ऑफ यू आर अ भारत रत्न बट यू हैव टू लिव योर लाइफ विद दैट काइंड ऑफ डिग्निटी एंड लव फॉर योर कंट्री यू आर भारत रत्न क्या बात है इट्स टोटल टोटली अमेजिंग feeling for me that he talks with such intuitive powerful energy ye hum hai which is true ya aap hain ya aap nahi hain there is nothing in between par insaan itni kamzor cheez hai ki hum kaisi bhi zindagi jeene lag jate hain you know so aapke zamane mein sir actors aur actresses kaun the jinke <laughs> नहीं दिलीप कुमार थे राज कपूर थे देवानंद थे एंड फॉर सम टाइम शमी कपूर वाज लॉट ऑफ फन एंड देन वहीदा रहमान मधुबाला बिजंती माला दीज वर द पीपल यू नो एंड स्पेशली बलराज साहनी हु वाज अ ग्रेट एक्टर यू नो and you did some very interesting movies you know aur tab ka cinema mein baat bhi thi devdas jo thi jo bimal roy ne banayi kya sensitive well done well directed film thi well acted film thi aur aaj ki devdas dekho to it's fantastic nonsense aur shahrukh khan is a fun frolic guy you know when he dances and sings and acts in movies like jati hu main jaldi hai kya you know he looks very nice and we enjoy looking at him but when he becomes a devdas it's a disaster and those these young filmmakers you know the whosoever they are you know very popular ones three four top ones young filmmakers you know they are greedy people they want to put so much into every film that they make it into a melodrama and it becomes exaggerated nonsense because they haven't learned to underplay and understate a vision which is simple and deep abhi kuch din pehle i saw that film that was the best i have seen from bollywood you know dhobi ghat that is one film dhobi ghat wo pipli times is also kachra in the second half but dhobi ghat is a movie well directed well acted and well perceived <clears throat> baaki to they are fun you know to watch chila ki jawani all the, you know their dance number some of those are very very you know <laughs> colorful and very uh, energizing but my favorite was uh, that one bidi sulgaile balamba jigar ma bahut aa gaya kyunki uski poetry bhi jo hai badi focus aur desi hai and then this woman also bipasha bas basu it's very special you know and even katrina did very well you know sheila ki jawani but i thought that was the cheapest jiske liye log itne pagal ho rahe hain munni badnaam hui darling tere liye munni badnaam hui darling tere liye munni ke gaal tu na pe na chala bhi chala na bhi re le jhandu मुन्नी बदनाम हुई एवं ही चीप स्टफ एंड इवन हर बॉडी लैंग्वेज डजेंट हैव दैट मैजिक लाइक बिपाशा बिपाशा बासु और कैटरीना कैफ इन दोनों में एक अलग चार्ज है इनकी बॉडी में यू नो आफ्टरऑल 
body language in, in a dance is very important and the kind of body you possess. Everybody can't say the same thing. Musicians too, of course, you know, Vilayat Khan Sahib, Bismillah Khan Sahib, Bhim Singh Joshi Ji, Kishori Amunka, Pandit Malik Arjun Mansur, who are they? These are some of the 12 people who were, they have been dadus of music, you know. And after that, the rest of the people who are very low, they are very low. And they are the people who are connectivity is not there. I am saying that you have made me through the creative act of the work of your creative act and through the life of your life. The musician is the one who is the one who is the one who is the one who connects you with the supreme energy and he takes you there. And those are the real musicians because Indian classical music is not for entertainment, you know, as Kishori Ji also says it, you know that it's for spiritual upliftment or spiritual fulfillment. And uh, these are some of the masters, you know, when they sing or when they play, they connect you with the supreme energy. So you don't have to know which raga is being played, you know, or what notes are being played, it doesn't matter. But the energy, the power of it that connects you with the supreme energy is what matters, you know. So these few masters, had the capacity and the, you know, power to do it for us and take us along. I think, you know, everyone, each one of us, we have some kind of rhythm and music playing inside us at any given time. Sometimes it's music, music, sometimes it's music in the form of feelings and emotions and forms and textures that gets converted into an image, you know. So music to is a very essential part of music and rhythm is a very essential part of human being. Without that, you know, we are dry people, you know, nothing takes us anywhere then. <laughs> I dream that I have reached a great situation and I want to take out my camera and I discover I don't have my camera with me. <laughs> so what will we dream? We don't have a camera in my past. That's why I keep my cameras, my equipment with me all the time. <laughs> well, you see, looking at my photographs, you know, my photographs are about crowds, about crowded places, about life everywhere and their interaction and their, you know, m moments which are undisturbed and, uh, you know, untouched by anybody. And I also feel that eventually, over the years, the discipline you create, the body language you acquire, like I don't carry camera bags and lenses and things, I carry only one camera with one zoom lens. So to any outsider I will look like a, or somebody with a camera, not a pro, here comes a professional, not that kind. But then your body language, your years of experience merges and that's what is very essential. That even in my pictures where there are so many people in a given situation, none of them is looking at the camera. You see, the, the, the music, the rhythm in you, the discipline in you, and when that intuitive energy is at play, life starts playing for you in that, with that rhythm, which is yours. And it develops, it it creates its own kind of rhythm and energy for you to grab it. Because you make yourself available to them mentally, physically and spiritually. 
and then you give it, you get it back from it when things are, get organized for you in any given space. Did you notice that it is increasing? Have you felt the shift in that? Yes, yes, it does. Sure, because you know, with your over the years, with deeper kind of intensity and sensitivity, the the charge, the power becomes stronger, and. It energizes and, and enriches the whole experience of being there, you know. Things work out for you. They come together for you to create a magic. Rishi Muni jo the, yahan aapke saath physically baithe huye and they are traveling and visiting somebody else somewhere else. Agar wo ye kar sakte hain, at least within that given space, all the elements can work for you according to your own rhythm and your own magic. That, but that is not yours. Because you become one with the, all those elements and energies, mentally, physically and spiritually, so they are yours and you are theirs is a kind of a thing. Not that they are dancing for you. That's the emergence and re-emergence. When you merge to re-emerge with an image. आप अपने साथ बैठ के अपने आप में रिस्टोर हो जाएं एंड दैट रिस्टोरेशन ऑफ वन सेल्फ टू वन सेल्फ इज वेरी प्रेसिस एक्ट क्योंकि उससे ये सारा खेल ही उसी का है क्योंकि हम बिखरे लोग होते हैं हम फिजिकली मेंटली स्पिरिचुअली पर जब हम एक हो जाते हैं रिस्टोर हो जाते हैं then our creative energies come into play and that's the time when we are a complete human being. So it's a good idea, people think of things, you know, which are very different and, and so simple, so ordinary and yet very powerful. interesting <laughs>